If you walk into any elementary school and you say, hey, should we be voting for somebody with 34 felony convictions who may be going to prison? Or should we vote for somebody that went to law school and protected kids like you from child abusers? I can guarantee you that the kids, the elementary kids, know right from wrong. But somehow they grew up to be these idiotic um, adults that somehow can't figure it out. It is beyond me. I'm Jessica Denson, host of Lights On with Jessica Denson, and I'm joined by the one and only Texas representative, Jasmine Crockett. Such a pleasure, as always, to have you on Lights On. Welcome back. It's good to see you. Now, we had such a blast last time you were here, played a little music, yes. and <laughs> you are coming here on the heels of an extraordinary week at the DNC, where, of course, you gave a speech that brought me to, to tears, I think brought many Americans to tears. Can you just kind of tell us what it was like um, to be there in Chicago and the feedback that you've been getting since that such a uh, beautiful sharing of, of a story about Vice President Harris that you gave? Yeah, so first of all, the energy was electric at DNC in Chicago. Um, so grateful for all of the Democrats that traveled. And, and actually, it wasn't just Democrats. Um, I'm so grateful for all the Americans that traversed the country to convene in Chicago um, for this very historic moment. And while it is historic, because this is a woman of color that is now the official nominee for the Democratic Party, um, and more importantly, I think what this moment meant for me was just an opportunity to see the best of America on display. And so um, the fact that I could contribute to that in any way is an honor of my lifetime that I'll never forget. It also meant a lot of pressure, um, especially as a freshman member. And we could not find in the history of the DNC where too many freshmen have really been given an opportunity to speak at the DNC, let alone during prime time, let alone could we find another black woman freshman. And so um, I felt like it meant that there was a lot of trust in my ability and I did not want to fail. Um, but more importantly, I am always looking to the future and I did not want to foreclose on another young member's opportunity um, to have the ability to address not just this country, but the world, because the world is watching as we go through this election cycle. As I approached Vice President Harris for our official photo, she turned to me and asked, what's wrong? Mind you, we'd never met, but she saw right through me. She saw the distress. I immediately began crying. And the most powerful woman in the world wiped my tears and listened. It's so hard for me to tell this story. She then said, among other things, you are exactly where God wants you. Your district chose you because they believe in you, and so do I. We deserve better. We deserve a president who can be a bright light in a sea of darkness. One who will, put us, who will pull us forward because we won't go back. Amanda Gorman said it best. There's always light if only we are brave enough to see it, if only we are brave enough to be it. Kamala Harris showed me that light. And America, when she is our president, together we will shine as that beacon of hope and freedom around the world once more. Just as you were talking, a thought came to me, and it was it was a theme of your speech, which was, of course, you, you were meeting with Vice President Harris for the first time. She asked you, what's wrong? She saw that something was bothering you, which is such a beautiful thing. I don't, so many of us have been in that moment where we that just needed someone to see us and acknowledge us. And I remember a theme, um, some very misplaced trust that was placed in, um, 
Donald Trump's campaign back in 2016 when I was very tragically sucked into that vortex. And it was that he was seeing the quote unquote forgotten man. Okay. Um, can you just talk about where the Democratic Party is? And you talked about it. it's not just Democrats, it's independents, it's Republicans, so many people coming together. I mean, this really is a coalition for people that are just crying out to be seen and their needs to be met and to have their value recognized. Like I made a theme of my show last week. Can you talk about seeing the people who feel like they're not seen or they're forgotten? You know, um, it's it's part of what I do every day. I think that as a representative, um, it is important that I listen to the people that put me into position. And I always remind my constituents, especially as I like meet new constituents and they're just like, oh my God, can I get a picture? I'm like, uh, duh, like I work for you, right? And I always try to make sure <laughs> that I keep an eye on the prize, you know, regardless of how many people throughout the country um, may think I'm great. I get here one way and that is through the people of Texas 30. Um, they are the only ones that can hire or fire me. And so um, I am always humbled and I always try to make sure that no one ever feels as if they are not seen. Um, but as an elected official, I think, especially being a lawyer, like these are two groups of people that people just don't like. <laughs> um, most people don't like lawyers unless they need them. And you usually don't like a politician unless you need them as well. Um, but, you know, it was really a part of the story that we cut out because we were trying to shorten it, number one, to keep me, I was trying to keep from being emotional. And number two, uh, you know, I was, I only had limited time. And part of the story was that I wasn't just there um, by myself. It was actually the Black Caucus. The entire Black Caucus had been invited to the vice president's residence for a reception. And so here it was, I was surrounded by colleagues. And these are people that absolutely, they did not know me very well as I had just gotten to Congress but they definitely knew me a lot better than the vice president and they couldn't see that I was in pain. Um, and so it's one of the reasons that that story really means so much to me. And I don't, I, I know that the rest of the country didn't necessarily realize that, but it really talked about how in tune she is. And there is a deal in DC where it's like only certain people and only certain voices matter. Even as an elected official, like if you're not like a top fundraiser, if you're not a senior member, if you're not in um, some position of leadership, you're just kind of another one of the people in D.C. Mm -hmm. And so to have her of all people see me, I think it really just allowed people to better understand that she really is a real person who cares about people beyond what they can do for her. Um, and again, this is before any viral moments. It's before, you know, people looked at me and thought, man, she's a pretty decent communicator. This was just me as a freshman black woman that walked into the president's residence. Um, and so I do think it is important that we get back to what politics is supposed to be, mm -hmm. which we are supposed to be representatives of the people. Mm -hmm. And when you say that you're representative of the people, that has to be the people as a whole. Um, that has to be a coalition that leaves no one behind. It has to be able to recognize um, the successes as well as the pain that people are dealing with um, and really trying to make sure that everyone feels like this is the land of opportunity for them. And it does start with being able to actually see people um, and listening to people. Yeah, it really is so beautiful when you're describing that that motherly instinct that she had um, to to see through when you are fil filled with a room of people who can't see it. Uh, you know, it's really that that selflessness in someone that would <clears throat> enable someone like you who's got so much talent, raw talent, they're just waiting to be unleashed. And it was that act of selflessness and care, genuine care from her that that unleashed that in you. Really a beautiful thing to witness. Yeah. Um, I, I, you're talking about your experience as a lawyer. We, of course, had a superseding indictment just come out this week from Jack Smith in yeah. the January 6th case. I, I got to tell you, when I step back from this whole situation, it makes me sick to my stomach that we are dealing with the Supreme Court who has had, who has said 
that crimes committed in the Oval Office um, can just happen with free reign because they might fall under a bucket of quote unquote official acts. We are in serious straits as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Rep Crockett, can you just kind of give me your thoughts on this whole scenario, Donald Trump being indicted for the fifth time, the Supreme Court um, extra constitutional territory we're, we're in? Yeah, so, you know, one of the things that I talk about a lot is Project 2025. And I don't anticipate that the majority of Americans will read this almost thousand page document. And I know that Donald Trump and his associates have tried to dissociate themselves with it. Um, but I've argued for a while that Project 2025 is already underway. Um, it has been underway. And one of the main points of Project 2025 is to consolidate so much power into the executive uh, role that it does challenge, if not tear apart, democracy. And when you get to the point that you trample on the Constitution and the idea that everyone is equal under the law, uh, meaning that we should have just as many opportunities as well as face the same level of punishment, but you literally create this two-tier system as we have heard over and over and over from so many um, Donald Trump acolytes that there's this two-tier justice system. Well, I have argued for the longest that there's always been a two-tier justice system as someone who um, has had the privilege of practicing law in an actual courtroom and dealt with thousands of defendants that um, the law hasn't been equally applied. It's one of the reasons that I initially decided that I wanted to be a lawmaker is because I felt as if those that were writing the laws did not fully understand that um, they were sometimes creating these scenarios and I just wanted the law to be smarter. But, but the reality is that we should all be concerned and this should not be a partisan thing. And I think that that's why part of the reason that the Kamala Harris, Tim Walls coalition is building the way that it is, is because when you start saying things like, oh yeah, his attorneys were right when they argued to the Supreme Court of the United States that the president should be allowed to order SEAL Team 6 to go out and kill their political opponent or whomever. And that can't be brought up in the form of um, someone being criminally indicted. That is a problem. And it should be a problem for anyone who really believes in the foundation of who we are in this country. And frankly, as they have told us many a times, and when I say us, specifically Black folk, they have told us to go back to where we come from. They have told everybody to go back where they came from, even though, I mean, we're talking about original colonizers, but nevertheless, like we won't go there and try to <laughs> school them on history mm -hmm. and let them know, like, I'm sorry, my ancestors didn't beg to be dragged across from Africa mm -hmm. uh, in slave ships. Um, to basically build this country, we won't go there and give you the history lesson because we know you don't want to go through history lessons in this country. But my answer to them or my call to them is for them, if you don't believe in democracy, go holler at Putin. Go, go find yourself and your way to Russia because that is what Donald Trump and Project 2025 seeks to make us. They seek to disallow um, freedom of press. And when you are in a place like Russia, you don't have freedom of press. You have whatever Putin wants you to put out. It's known as propaganda. Like there is no freedom. When you start talking about freedom of religion, um, for religious folk, like, listen, how would you feel, especially these Christo fascists, if somebody told you that you couldn't worship the way that you want to, which I take issue with it, because I think that your Jesus is the same one that you somehow used to justify slavery back in the day. And I don't see that as being my Jesus. But nevertheless, in this country, you are free to worship Buddha. You are free to worship um, Jesus. You are free to worship whomever it is, Allah, whoever it is that you want to worship. And that is how it's supposed to be. But that is not what they seek to do. And I don't think that you can force anybody as the child of a preacher. I don't think you can force anybody into Christianity. I think that people seek out Christianity because they see the way that somebody lives or whatever religious belief or none at all. Um, and so, you know, I just take issue with the fact that we all are supposed to basically end up in this repressive situation that looks a lot more like Putin's Russia than the United States of America. And for anyone that wants to live that way, I encourage them to go and find their way to Russia. Very well said, very well said. Yeah, 
I know there's some crazy, crazy stuff going down in your state with them trying to force feed their version of Christianity through public schools. We had rep yeah. James Salarico state representative on a couple of weeks ago. And yeah. uh, you know, when I, when I talk about this with him, he's a devout Christian, I'm a devout Christian, you're a Christian. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I don't know what version of Christianity you're teaching, but it sure ain't mine. So I sure as hell don't want you teaching it to my children in the public yeah. schools when I have them. <laughs> Thank you very much. But yes, this is absolutely, I love the way you paint that. Um, there's so many uh, really scary, um, omens of what a full-fledged second Trump administration would be like right there in your home state of Texas, where I know you are today. This other story came out really scary um, of Latino civil rights activists, their homes being raided by this two-year investigation into quote-unquote voter fraud by Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, who is an indicted felon or has been indicted for crimes himself. Um, and this is this is really scary. They are raiding the homes of 87 year old women in their nightgowns at gunpoint. Um, this these are people who help senior citizens who are not receiving their ballots. I mean, this is some serious. First of all, just intimidation, and second of all, very serious voter suppression. Do you agree? Oh, absolutely. And that's what it's about. You know, um, it it is. It is wild, the, the world that we're living in, as I've been out and I've been campaigning on behalf of uh, Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. I, I, in fact, I left Chicago, went to Michigan and did about four cities in Michigan immediately after leaving Chicago, didn't even get to come home. The reason that I bring this up is that when I'm in Michigan, I tell them about the fact that they have the prototype for what we can be, because they have this beautiful blue trifecta by controlling the House, controlling the Senate, and having a woman that sits as the executor in their state. And with this blue trifecta, they have protected access to reproductive health. They have also um, tightened the reins and been smart on guns. Um, and so I tell them, you have every reason to show up and vote blue because you know what you will get with it. That's if you like the trajectory that Michigan is on. And this is not to say that Michigan is perfect. Um, I don't believe that there is a perfect politician. I don't believe that there's a perfect party, but I do believe that there are those that are seeking a more perfect union. Then on the other hand, you have Texas. And if you want to see America turn into Texas, then yeah, stay at home, sit on the couch or go vote for the other guy. But let me tell you the realities of Texas. The reality is that in January, Texas seeks to institute the death penalty for anyone seeking an abortion. The reality in Texas is that right now, if you get an abortion and it is not approved by your politicians, then you and or your caregiver um, could go to prison at this point in time. Also, the reality in Texas is that when they don't want you to be able to actually elect your representatives because they can't come up with policies that will seemingly um, have an appetite across the board, they instead decide that they're going to cheat um, in the form of intimidation and or voter suppression and or voter subversion. And that is what we are getting. Uh, when I was in the Texas House, for the term that I served, that is the only time in my life that I had a warrant put out for my arrest. That is what the Republicans felt like it made sense to do because I dared to challenge them on the voter suppression bills that they were trying to bring about. Mm -hmm. Voter suppression bills that specifically targeted older black folk. Right now, what we consistently see is that there is a target on the back of anyone that is poor, anyone that is a person of color, whether they are old or young, anyone that they were characterized as being part of the traditional coalition of Democrats, whether it's removing voting locations from our colleges or now in the form of intimidating and going into people's homes. If you believe in the constitution, let me tell you, as somebody who has done criminal defense and somebody who's done civil rights work, we do have constitutional protections in our home, allegedly. 
And I think that they are straining all of these constitutional protections. And the only time that they want to say that they believe in the Constitution is when they can bend it to the will that they are seeking. Any other time, they ignore it and they trample on it. And everyone should be outraged. It should not be partisan. You should be outraged because here is the reality. What is good for the goose is good for the gander. So if it was Democrats and you would be outraged, then you should be outraged when it's Republicans, because it's just a matter of a clear delineation of right versus wrong. And I think that that's where we're struggling in this country. We have lost our black and white. What is right versus wrong? I promise you, if you walk into any elementary school and you say, hey, should we be voting for somebody with 34 felony convictions who may be going to prison? Or should we vote for somebody that went to law school and protected kids like you from child abusers? I can guarantee you that the kids, the elementary kids, know right from wrong. But somehow they grew up to be these idiotic um, adults that somehow can't figure it out. It is beyond me. Rep Crockett, there is a 24-7 propaganda machine to try to drive people out of their minds. Um, you know, just on that issue of voter, so-called voter fraud, I will tell you, I was very unfortunately in the camp for years that believed that there was some kind of epidemic of voter fraud among undocumented people in this country. It's it's complete fiction. It, there is no epidemic of voter fraud. The few times that we actually have voter fraud pop up, guess who, guess who committed it? Oh, it's a Republican. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I actually uh, had a hearing uh, before B6 with uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, where I pointed out this exact fact specifically about Georgia. <laughs> I, I specifically pointed out um, that it was Republicans. And, and here's the reality. Um, I personally believe that anybody can break the law. A Democrat or a Republican. I, I, I've, I've represented enough people to know <laughs> that people of all types of political backgrounds break Temptation the doesn't spare any one of us, right? It, it absolutely doesn't. Yeah. Um, but, but I think for me, what is so frustrating is that they are trying to convince people without bringing actual documentation. Um, you know, can I say that our elections are perfect? Absolutely not. Can I say that there haven't been incidences of cheating? Period. All, I mean, I will tell you probably in every election, there is some, some evidence of something, right? But it is so minimal <laughs> that it doesn't justify this. Like, because we do have laws in place and because we do have deterrence that make people say, like the average sane person says, no, I'm not going to do it. It's kind of like, when you go into the grocery store, you know, and you go in and you buy something, can the grocery store say that no one's ever stolen from them? Absolutely not. But I can tell you the vast majority of them are not enduring so much theft that it justifies shutting it down. Most of these stay in business and they work on whatever issues that they can to minimize the theft that is happening, right? It's the same thing with voting. And instead, their solution is shut it down. They just don't want people to participate. And that is the problem. It's like you've got something where you may need not even a Band-Aid. You need one of those itty bitty like circular Band-Aids, right? <laughs> but instead, the spot they're one. over here and they're like, you know what? Forget <laughs> it. Let's put a stitch through the whole arm and all this other stuff. And they're causing more damage yes. than they are anything else. And that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of even make the comparison. It's not even like in my mind, you can't even compare it to theft because with theft, people have an immediate reward. There's an incentive. Yeah. I go yeah. in, I take something, I get something right back. Like voting, there is no immediate like, no. you know, no. reward for casting a vote. Like there is no. no incentive for mass no. voter fraud. Sorry, no. it just doesn't exist except no. in the minds of Republicans who have planted the idea for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. It doesn't happen. But Rev Crockett, I know your time is so valuable. You've got constituents that want to see you there in Texas. I just want to thank you so much for joining us again. We absolutely love you, having you here on Lights On and, and love the work that you're doing. I appreciate you, Jessica. Have a good one. You too. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. You can always find Lights On by subscribing to Lights On with Jessica Denson wherever you get your audio podcasts and by subscribing to Jessica Denson on YouTube. Thanks so much.